Hey, hey there, this is Aris, and welcome uh, to the channel. Stay home, stay safe. I said it, I could just end the video right there. This is quite a predicament we find ourselves in, isn't it? Today is our family's 14th day in quarantine. We actually thought this was a good idea before people started talking about it. The majority of the people I know started it approximately eight days ago. And since yesterday morning, we have a curfew. Fun times. You need to send an SMS out to the ministry stating your business and you have to carry your permit along with your ID at all times. Otherwise, you get fined for 150 euros. Fun times, I say. In retrospect, it turns out it was a good idea to barricade ourselves in here before the situation got out of control. Our front door opens once a week, basically to get provisions. When I went to the supermarket on Friday the 13th of March, and yep, I think Friday the 13th is just a mere coincidence, nothing more to it, I don't believe in things like that. I felt like I was an extra in the film Purge. You know, the one where they have decided it's okay to kill each other once per year. The queues were long, the shelves were empty, and people were running in the corridors. I wanted to buy a few packs of pasta when I noticed that the gentleman standing in front of them, who I was about to tap on the shoulder to let me through, raised his hand to his nose, his hand, and sneezed his germs all the way from the sun to the depths of the earth, including the packs I needed. And I backed off right before the blast, thankfully, and I started to run. So now we stay in, we cook, we play with the kids, we read fairy tales and bedtime stories, we clean everything, we watch cartoons. I record in here in the studio and we sleep. Oh, and we wash our hands like a hundred times every day. It's the new norm now. Another thing that we do is read the news. And it helps, believe me, it does. It helps us try to make more educated decisions. But it also stresses me out terribly. I usually read the news in the morning. It basically takes me straight to hypochondriac arrest. I start washing my hands every two minutes, even though we have already sanitized pretty much everything that's entered our house before putting it on the shelves. <sighs> you see, this disease scares me. It scares the crap out of me. And yes, some people in my extended family are in high-risk groups, like our parents and uncles and aunts and friends who are battling their own demons already, like diabetes or cancer or pneumonia or other diseases. But what scares me the most is this. Hi, my name is Dan Mace. I'm 30 years old. I'm reasonably active. I woke up with extreme fatigue. Then when the next doctor arrived, he asked me about my symptoms. He checked my vitals and said that I just do not show enough extreme symptoms to go through the process of having a corona test. And he looked at me and said, you definitely do not have the virus. The following two to three days, things started to get way, way worse and I developed what I believed then to be pneumonia. Finally, on March 1st, 2020, I woke up and I started feeling oddly normal. And then since I'd been assured and reassured by doctors that I don't have any corona symptoms and I was feeling better, I just returned to life as normal. It was then on the 10th of March, 2020, I boarded an Emirates flight from Los Angeles to Cape Town. My reason for doing this trip was to celebrate my wedding in South Africa the following week. I then went home, I saw my family, I saw my parents. I went on a weekend away with really close friends of mine to my bachelor's where we were all in very close proximity. But on that afternoon, my doctor phoned me and told me that I've tested positive and I got these forms. I have not shown any symptoms since being ill in the States. And what also really scares me is this. This virus decides how it wants to attack you based on your health. I'm so healthy, it got mad and it started turning my insides to glass. The worst thing it can do to you. It didn't just give me a little cold. It knew that wasn't gonna hurt me. It gave me the hardest thing it could give. I was trying to breathe and it was like being drowning on dry land. It was like one of those movies where you're in a room and the room is filling up with water 
and you got one inch before the water takes over and you got your lips up there trying to get the very last bit of air and you can't suck it in <sighs> and you know you're about to suffocate no it's not bad it's horrible so basically you don't get only old people you also get young people feeling so sick that they feel like they are going to die and you also get people who have no problems whatsoever who are actually dying because you see Kevin was a perfectly healthy man before contracting the virus. Thankfully, he's now doing great. But there are others like him that didn't do okay. For example, today I learned about an 18-year-old man in the UK. Healthy. Gone. A 12-year-old girl in the US. Critical condition. So we know it doesn't only affect the elderly and the sick. Everyone is in potential danger. What also scares me about this new virus is the following story described by a friend of mine. And it was similar, I guess, in the cases of Dan and Kevin and so many others. But anyway, here's the one from my friend. See, he wasn't feeling so well, so he called the local health center up and went there. They measured his temperature and ran some tests, told him to leave and that he's gonna be fine. Mind you, that was right at the beginning of the big boom of the virus here, at the very start of the phase of the exponential spread. My guy asked to be tested for the coronavirus, and the person at the health center replied, Why? Have you traveled to or met with someone who's been to Italy or China recently? My friend said no and was asked to go home. And I'm guessing that was probably because there aren't that many tests around. So basically we are dealing with an untraceable threat, which super easily jumps from one person to another, lingers in the air long after the droplets of a sneeze or a cough fall to the floor, it mutates and can potentially affect anybody, paralyzes your lungs and immune system, but 30% of the people who get it, and some say that this percentage is closer to 60%, will be asymptomatic. That means, as in the case of Dan, they won't think they have it, so they'll travel, party, hug, kiss, everything you'd expect from people. Business as usual. So even after the whole world has started movements like stay the f fraction of your lifetime that is required of you home, this is the image of my hometown during the past 10 days. What people didn't understand is that while they were out for a last stroll before they lock us up like they did to Italy, they went and spread the disease like wildfire. This could be happening to your country right now. I mean, sure, we can blame the governments for not taking action earlier. We could say, why didn't you lock us down earlier? If you had, maybe now this whole situation would have been over. Because, you know, many experts actually say that if we did lock everything and everyone down for 20 days, I'll give you a month, it is actually possible that this idiot of a virus would have nowhere else to go. We could boost the financing of our healthcare systems, treat the severe cases, isolate the asymptomatic and light cases, protect the population, and kill the virus. Or contain it. Whatever. But the governments have their own agendas. And that's not a bad thing, not necessarily. I mean, hear me out. Sure, yeah, don't go lying to people about facts, that's bad. Don't jump to frail conclusions telling your people about herd immunity when this new virus proves it is immune to immunity. I mean, sick people get treated, then they test negative, and then they contract it again. Where are their antibodies? You can't have immunity without antibodies. So are governments to blame? Yes, some are. But for the sake of this argument, let's pretend that all governments are bad. Evil. They just want to protect the economy and do not have their citizens' best interests in mind. Or that they are benevolent evil geniuses who secretly know that the Earth needs a reboot, like through a drastic reduction of the planet's population. Let's just take them out of the equation for a minute, because conspiracy theories and labs that created this whole thing on purpose is just too much to handle right now on top of everything else. And don't get me wrong, please, if you need to protest, go ahead and do that. But let's pretend that, impeachments aside, there is absolutely nothing else to be done about our governments. What are we left with? You and me. I mean, if you think about it, it all started from us. It all happened because humanity doesn't want to learn how to wash its hands properly and clean up after its own mess, in its own home. 
our immune systems are failing us because we feed antibiotics to animals and use chemicals on our fruit and vegetables because we are dipped in radiation and smog in the atmosphere. You are probably watching this video on a Wi-Fi network right now. One of the 15 in your building that go through your body every single second. Or even worse, you're watching it on a mobile phone. This close to your body and eyes and brain with an antenna that connects to satellite and a Bluetooth connection that transmits data to your earbuds or headphones. <sighs> I'm sorry, I sound like I have a lust for destruction or like I hate technology. That couldn't be further from the truth. I love technology. It's keeping us together right now. More than any other time in human history, performers are organizing live shows, concerts, dances, paintings through streaming platforms. Classes continue online. Psychotherapists are trying to balance out people amidst the havoc via Skype. We are more informed about everything instantly. We can talk and video chat with each other at the touch of a button. We get goosebumps and we are all filled with hope because we can see and hear what people are doing in Italy, singing in their balconies. And we can save lives in the hospitals. But there is so much more we can do than that. We can change. We can learn from our mistakes and change. Because if we don't, I don't think this is going to go away. And even if it does, we'll be sitting ducks waiting for the next one. Shh. The next ones. But if we decide to act, there is so much to change about our mentality. So much good we can do. We can start small. We can sneeze in our elbows. We can wash our hands properly. Just watch a video on the subject, Google is your friend. If you're famous or you have a lot of money, don't ask to be tested every single week. There is a shortage of tests. We are all hypochondriacs nowadays. Anyways, we are all afraid. Follow your doctor's orders. Read about the symptoms. Make more educated guesses. Learn when to be really anxious. If you don't have trouble breathing or really high fever, you probably don't need to go to the hospital or get a test. But you can isolate yourself. Everybody else, just stay at home. Don't move. Of course you still want to go to the park and take your kids to the playground. And you want to do it as much as you can before they ban it in your area too. But remember, they, the authorities, are slow in nearly every country. They didn't impose a curfew in time. The virus is already here. Already wherever you are and it's faster than us. So why not take action on our own? Are you trying to prove that you can outsmart it? Do you think you're stronger? Less of a vessel for the virus to use in order to get to other people? Do you know how the population who is locked up inside sees you right now? Do you not see how much of a threat you are? Just like unaware people like you were in China, Italy, and soon so many other countries. Please stay at home. Why not seize this opportunity to connect with each other? If you are a family, maybe this is a great chance to spend time with your kids, play with them, read with them, get to know their world, cherish them. Maybe hug your family and tell them that you have everything you need right there. If you are a couple, explore each other. If you are alone or if you are old, if you are young and lust for life, or anybody really, try something new. Play the crap out of that video game with no shame. Read that book you always said you would, or write it. Pursue that business idea online. Build that startup. Create something wonderful. Educate yourself. Get mentoring. You are never too young or too old for these things. And you are never alone if you create. As a whole, as a people, we can learn and move towards a more sustainable growth, a more sustainable food chain system, Yes, we will have to adapt, but yes, you can teach an old dog new tricks. And our societies need this. They need to evolve. We can learn from this social distancing experiment. Because basically, we've already proven the name wrong. We turned it to physical distancing and social proximity. We call our loved ones more than we did. We actually care about each other. We miss each other and we have the time in our hands to notice. We also turned it to creative outburst. 
There is more content being created right now than ever before in the history of the internet, possibly of all humankind. And most of it, for the first time ever, it is actually trying to promote and inspire unity and the feeling that we are all in this together. We are all one tribe, one race, one nation. Viruses know no borders, no colors, no races, no religions, no genders, no sexual preferences. Viruses have a common cause, only one, and they are dedicated to it. Are we gonna let them prove that they are better than us? I'm staying in. I'm doing my part. I'm scared, but I'm not alone. I'm trying my best, but I am not alone. For my family, for yours, for me and for you, I am trying to be responsible. I am trying to be kind. What will you do? The only way to combat this disease is with information. You can prevent this. Social distancing. It's all we got. sick. So you guys have to stop transmitting it. Quit acting like it can't happen to you.